for the new users in the call. Templates are basically predefined animations that we have in our library that you can apply to uh, an existing object or you can individually import it and have it like with the original object, right? So I showed you how to import the template with the original object, but for existing objects um, that you already have it in your simulation or you just add it to your simulation, you can upload a file that will apply the template to that object, right? So you can find some templates in our library and I will show you now how to do that. But one thing to keep in mind is that if you develop an animation that you liked and that you plan on using it later, you can export this template that you created and create your own local library. So like I've, some companies are already doing that. You have like a folder internally where you store the, the different templates that you use normally and so on and so forth, right? So to do that, let me first show you where you can find our templates and we plan to expand this library uh, soon. So if you go over here in the question mark and you're going to user guide, you're gonna find our question mark, oh, our user guide over here. Inside site plan features, you're gonna see the resource animation with the visual graph, right? So there's two, there are three items over here, resource animation intro, how to animate resource to follow path and how to animate resources using the parameters, right? So both of them, the, the last two are the most important ones. So if you click over here and you click on opening a new tab, you're gonna see the actual video showing how to use the, the resource animation to animate an object following a path, okay? So, um, of course, there are instructions over here on how to do that and so on and so forth. But if you scroll all the way down, you're gonna see templates that are applicable to this specific animation, like following a path, right? Um, the other option that we have over here for the resources is how to uh, animate the parameters of resources, just like the one that I just created with you guys over here, how to make these object move. So you have some options over here as well. So primary animation, how you can download it and so on and so forth. And when you click to download these templates, you're gonna see what I mentioned before, the JSON file. This is the code file that controls that animation and has a bunch of things over here. And basically you don't need to worry about that. You just need to click download over here to get that JSON file. So when I get that JSON file, I'm gonna download something here. And then I can take that same template file and apply to a object that already exists. So I can click on import and then I will replace the graph that I have over there with my downloaded template. Okay, so when I, I just apply the template to this resource, and when I click on edit, I have a template over here of anim animation for bones. Cool. So what are you seeing over here for this template is that we have two uh, lines of animation for bones and two columns, right? So usually um, depending on the resource that you were animating, you're gonna have linear uh, steps of animation or you're gonna have parallel steps of animation, right? So I like to organize it like this so I can see the linear ones and the parallel ones. So for example, if I, uh, feeding the bones from this mini excavator over here to this whole like line of animation, you see that now I can select the bones. So I can, for example, do a base, base rotation over here, and then I can do a arm rotation over here, right? So to see now my parameter limits, I'm gonna open the adjust function, and then I can see that the base rotation goes from zero to 360. So I'm gonna do the same that I did before, like 180, then goes back, and it's gonna take two seconds, two seconds. And the other one, that is the arm rotation. Uh, when I open this over here, I can see arm rotation, boom one, boom two. And then um, the arm rotation, sometimes the names of these bones and the names that you see over here are different because like this is, this is reading the actual native file that we have in the library. And this is what we expose to the customers that are not like working with uh, animations, okay? So um, let's see over here, the arm rotation and is supposed to be this rotation file over here. So I'm gonna just go into 90, zero to 90, and then 90 back to zero. And then 
usually I prefer to put in the same durations that I have in the column over here. At, uh, like I, I repeated the durations just because it's easier to understand when these things are happening in parallel. If you have like different durations over here in the bottom for the arm rotation, it's going to take longer for the animation to, com to complete that line of animation compared to the one at the top. So like for this sequence to to start again, it needs to complete all the criteria of inputs that you have over here. So let's say that this takes four seconds and this, the one in the bottom takes six, like the one on the top is gonna take four seconds and it's gonna stop and wait while the one in the bottom over here is gonna take six seconds and there's gonna be two seconds over there that like the, the base rotation is not gonna do anything, okay? So when I click over here, I can see now that rotation happening with also the arm like rotating. Cool. So if you see over here on the top, you can see that the arm has a rotation compared to the this joint over here that is connected to the cabin. Cool. So like there are two parallel uh, parameters being like being animated in this anim in this animation. Okay. So this is how you apply a template to an existing resource. So you can now, let's say that you, you like this template over here that you edited and you wanna create your library of templates, you can click on export over here and this is gonna download a file with the name of the resource. So you can open this, you can rename this file and put this into your own library and so on and so forth. Keep in mind that it doesn't, this is not applicable to that resource specifically, but let's say that I take this, um, this template that I just created and I want to apply to this other excavator. So I'm going to import that template that I created with the mini excavator. And when I open it, it won't play right away. The reason why is because every time that you apply a template to an existing object, like it will not connect the the main node with anything. So whatever connections you have with the main node, you have to reconnect it, right? So you have to like reconnect the bones again over here to go and animate the bones on the new one. But of course, you're gonna see like, you need to see if the the names of the bones over here are the same or the, otherwise the animation won't, won't play, right? So for example, this new excavator that I have over here, it doesn't have an arm rotation bone. So I cannot, this animation that's going on over here in the bottom is not gonna, it's not gonna do anything, cool? So I need to adjust the bones and whatnot, but at least the configuration and the structure of the animation is already there to save you some time. Cool. So, what type of templates do we have, right? So we have over here a, I need to keep doing this all the time. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> so um, the templates that we have are parameter animation, which is the one that I already showed to you guys right now. And you have move on path any animations in with its own variation. And we have the swap path, right? So what is the difference between the move on path and the swap path? The move on path won't interact with the the articulation of trucks. So you see over here, the truck itself, it's kind of like following that path but it's rotating as a whole thing. So like the, it doesn't de articulate the, the, the back part of the truck and the cabin. Whereas the swap path, you can see the articulation moving in a different way, right? So the difference between these two in the back end is that we are we apply a, automatically a rotation value to the parameter that controls this articulation, right? So it kind of like tries to fill it in within the line as best as possible. But again, this is something that is approximated. So it's not following the the kind of like all the safety rules that has that is applied to that truck and whatnot. It's more like for you to have like a more realistic kind of like animation of a resource that has this type of articulation. Music